Hey everybody, and welcome to another video. Today, we are going to take a look at how we can create our base armature with the help of Zsphere. So, the first thing that you want to uh, understand here is when you're working with ZBrush, you're basically working in a software that's more or less aimed at uh, the artist, not the engineer, like you would get from either a Maya or Max or pretty much any other software. What I mean by this is when you're working with ZBrush, you always want to have quick results and you want to have the leniency to be able to move your model around without having to move like a thousand vertices or edges. So this is where ZBrush is always kind of always kind of shines because when you want to concept something out and do it rather quickly, ZBrush is the way to do it. So today I want to show you how you can uh, quickly make the base armature on which you can then uh, later continue building up your mesh. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go over to the tool menu on the side and choose an actual Z sphere. So Z spheres are a tad bit more different than anything else. For example, if I choose a regular sphere and drag it in, you're going to see it's made out of, uh, well, let's go into edit. It's made out of polygons that you can then uh, move, but we first have to make it a poly mesh and then we start sculpting on it. Unlike it, when we choose to work with a Z sphere, we, we are basically presented with this sphere over here. That half of it is a darker color, half of it is lighter. So, what do Z spheres do, or what are they used for? Well, the first thing you're going to notice is once uh, you select a Z sphere, your brush here is going to change to sketch, and you have some different options over here. Also, when you mouse over it, you're going to see that uh, there is this line following your cursor. Now, this line is actually going to allow you to add in additional Z spheres. But for this, first I'm going to press on X because I want to turn on the symmetry. You'll notice as soon as I'm in the middle, that uh, circle becomes green. So now, when I click and drag, actually make a new z sphere if you I go down on the bottom click and drag i'll make a new one so if i rotate it from the side you're going to notice that now on this original uh, z sphere that we started off we have these two additional spheres so if i go over here in the move or press just w i can click on these and if i just click on them I can move them around. And what you can notice is as I'm moving them around, there's this uh, type of a neck following it. If I go from this side, move on the, click on the bottom one, and I can move the bottom one. I can move it up front, to the back, wherever I need it. So other thing that's really important to remember here is when you're moving it, if you press on this circle in the middle, you can actually move it around just like that. But if you press the this place over here, or uh, this green highlighted edge, you, you can actually move everything that's underneath it. So let's go ahead and again, jump into the uh, draw point or Q and add in a few more. So I'm going to click here and draw in two more like this. For example, let's uh, see if we can make this to be some type of a humanoid body. So I'm going to move this downwards a tiny bit just so it's not so tall. All right, go here, add the shoulders. And here's another thing when you're drawing out these uh, spheres, if you click and draw and then press the shift that is going to make sure that the newly created uh, spheres are exactly the same size as the one they originated from. So now if I want to get these smaller, I can go down to the scale over at E, click on it and then make it smaller like this. Again, 
the uh, Q for draw. I can either hold down shift to make it the same size or let go of shift and manually decide how big I want him to be. Again, let's draw him out his hands. All right, here we go. We have some hands going on here. Move it backwards a tiny bit. We have the pelvis. Now let's put in some legs. And as you can see, very, very quick, quickly, we are starting to get something that looks like the proverbial stickman. There we go. And let's just put in something as a neck base and an actual head. Move it upwards like that. And also, like we saw previously, we can rotate these and we can scale them. So scale it upwards until we get something down these lines. And this is one of the strong points of the Z-Spheres, uh, well, modeling. Why? Well, as you can see it right now, we can't really, we can't really go in and start modeling on this. The reason is that this is actually not geometry yet. If we want to see it as a geometry, we have to go over down here where it says adaptive skin. So when we click on adaptive skin, we have this uh, preview button. The hotkey for this is A. So by just pressing the A button, you can go and scroll through the a preview of the adaptive skin and the Z-spheres. Now this next slider to it is basically controlling how dense the geometry is going to be. So if I put it to one, you get a much uh, lower uh, quality geometry, number two. So basically something like the turbo smooth iterations. It's simply how much uh, geometry you're going to have on our Z spheres. All right, I'm going to leave it down to two. And I can go back, do uh, any changes that I might want to do. For example, if I want to get this to be bigger, Let's give it a bit of a, there we go. And as you saw over here, if I click these, I'm not just moving the, um, these uh, Z-spheres, I'm actually moving everything that's underneath them. So there you go, very, very flexible way of working. There you go. And you can choose how you want it to be in the final pose. So now let's say we like what we have over here. We press the A, we are happy with what we have over here. All we have to do is click on this make adaptive skin. But before I do this, put your uh, eyes head over here. You're gonna notice that as soon as I press make adaptive skin, we're gonna have this extra sphere or extra subtle happening. So now when I press A, I can still see the uh, z-sphere base but if i now go over here cl uh, click on the new subtool that we just made with the adaptive skin i'm going to get the original or the adaptive skin mesh but when i press the a i can no longer scroll through it the reason for this is that now this is actual geometry and as such i can go in and subdivide it so I can subdivide it a few more times. And then I can go like, choose any of the brushes and start sculpting to anything that I might want. So as you can see, this is a very, very quick way of getting your um, base meshes sketched out and getting you something that you can start working on quite quickly. Now, as you saw here, we just made this humanoid, but there is nothing stopping you. For example, you just go a Z spear and let's say you want to have some kind of an animal. You maybe even let's say try an insect. So again, very quickly add in some kind of a head. Wow. <laughs> okay, here's a good 
thing to remember when you have an extra um, Z sphere and you want to remove it, just hold down Control and click on it. There we go. And that way you remove the Z sphere. There we go. Let's move it around. Give it some. Well, make it some. Make it a bit more scaled. So we have some body. And I'm thinking, well, let's go with something that's going to be like. Well, a spider like creature. So one leg over here, one more over here, maybe even one more over here. This is going to be a funky spider, but hey, there we go. All right. One leg over here, scale it down, scale it down again, and again. And you're really starting to get the idea. All you have to do for Z spheres is get the initial base on which you can then later start sculpting without having to either use Dynamesh and pull vertices and redynamesh all the time. This way, there we go, we have the base on which you can uh, start sculpting right away. So this would be it in short for well, we're making an armature with Z-Sphere. So I hope you guys had fun. You managed to learn something new. If you have any questions, then leave them below. I'll meet you in the comment section of the video. Also, if you enjoyed this video, then please click the like button. And if you are not subscribed, now is a great time to do so. As always, thank you very much for watching. And I will see you all in the next video. Bye-bye.